Welcome everyone to our webinar today on superheroes. Just a moment. And uh, we're going to be talking about using superheroes in the English classroom. And uh, so just as always, I'd like to remind you that uh, you will receive a certificate of participation and a webinar handout in the next few days. If you've uh, registered to, to come into this, it will be sent automatically to you. However, check spam. Sometimes it goes to spam. If not, you can always email us to format at formazione at nlaworld.com. And in that uh, webinar handout, you get all the text from the webinar, including some extra things, so some links and all the worksheets that we show. In this one, we have quite a few worksheets that uh, are attached at the end of the, um, the handout. You can just print them out, photocopy them, use them for your classes. I think you'll find them really useful. Okay. Anyway, just to begin, just move this. Uh, super, as I'm sure you know, superhero films have never been so popular. It seems that every week there's a new Marvel or DC film in the cinemas or on streaming platforms. As Kathy said, also um, Pixar. I guess you can consider a lot of those. Um, in addition, TV shows and comics burst with the old familiar characters as well as new crime fighters and their villains. Yeah, I think that, you know, kids and adults alike just love a good superhero story. And so with this fascination with superpowers and alternative universes, it can be used to interest students in their English lesson creating stories, uh, reading about, and even creating superheroes and villains can encourage students to become involved in classroom activities that they would otherwise participate in reluctantly. Lots of the activities we're going to look at today do that. It's a, you know, an interesting spin on an activity that otherwise might be a little bit mundane. Yeah, exactly. I think we've tried to use some some things that we might normally use in other ways, but put a uh, superhero spin on them just to make them a bit more appealing. Um, let us know in the chat, have you ever used superhero themes in your lessons? Uh, if you have, let us know and let us know how. Okay. Um, as always, we have some objectives. So by the end of this session, teachers will be better able to incorporate themes of superheroes into their English lessons and inspire students to participate and contribute to lessons by engaging them with uh, superhero themes. Okay. Our first activity is asking students to create a superhero. So we've got this uh, worksheet here that is attached to the handout. Um, a fun idea could be to ask students to create a superhero with associated superpowers. Now, obviously, you could give a demonstration of this with uh, a superhero that everyone already knows, so Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, etc., okay? um, and talk about their, uh, their superhero's superhero name. Okay? Obviously, you know, Spider-Man, Batman tells you what they are, but other ones they may you know want to invent this okay remember woman as well okay um their real name use most superheroes have a second identity okay so you know whether it's clark kent or uh i can't remember what's uh spider-man's other name not sure let us know in the chat okay mm -hmm. um their origin story you know whether he was bitten by a bat whether he comes from the planet krypton or even just like uh, Batman, you know, his 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 parents were killed. Okay? Um, his superpowers, superpower or superpowers. Okay, weaknesses, just like you know, often we have some sort of weakness, like uh, Superman has kryptonite. Okay, um, costume. You know, they could describe the costume. The box at the top of this uh, worksheet is for them to draw it. Okay. Remember, this could be done in class or it could be done as homework. To be honest, it might even be good to get them to do the writing in class and the drawing as, as homework, or they could even do the drawing and then the writing in class the next day. Okay. Um, transport, 
you know, do they fly in an invisible plane like Wonder Woman? Do they drive in a Batmobile like Batman? They, or do they swing from, uh, what, do we, what, what, what do we say, spider cords, okay? spider webs for um, Spider-Man? Okay? Achievements, okay? what have they done? Have they beaten a crime person? Do they have a villain? Okay? And not to forget, drawing a picture. Okay? Obviously, not as important for their English, but you know, it gets the students involved. And uh, you know it might it might be best to leave this for homework or something like that, or quickly done so that they can finish off at the end, so they don't spend too much time just drawing the superhero. But uh, as I think we've talked about before in other webinars, you know, there's usually quite a few students who have like a hobby as drawing cartoons, manga maybe even. Okay, and uh, so you know those students could even help out the other ones draw their own. Okay. Uh, you could even, I guess, you could even swap these as long as one person describes the um, uh, the the costume. They could swap it and draw each other's superheroes, so that they have to interpret what is written below. Okay. Um, uh, associated with this, and you could even use the same handout is talking about my superhero. So let us know in the chat: Are there people in your life? who seem to have superpowers, who manage to stay calm in the face of overwhelming pressure. This might be a member of your family, a, a friend, a partner, a workmate, okay? even your children. Okay? These people are our real superheroes. Okay? They could be a parent, grandparent, sibling, friend, or who knows, your students even might nominate you as a superhero. Um, hopefully a superhero, not a villain. Okay. Um, you could demo this activity first by telling students about someone you know. Okay. So, for example, my superhero, they need to describe who he or she is, his or her superpowers. We're not expecting superpowers, you know, like flying or, you know, super strength, but, you know, extraordinary patience, you know, calm under pressure, things like this. Super villains, okay, who are the people that cause problems for this person? How is it that they, you know, when they when they're extremely patient, who are the people that uh that, that try their patience, let's say. Okay. Um Francesca said uh um she's got a hero. Okay. Uh, that's nice. Uh his or her likes, okay, so the things that that she she prefers or he prefers to do and i think a nice little touch would be how often i tell him or her that he or she is a superhero okay so here we don't have a worksheet or that could be done on the previous one okay a little bit of adapting but here we have an example there okay so my mum is my superhero she works all day but still manages to make me breakfast lunch and dinner this is not true for me. I make my own breakfast, <laughs> okay? Um, wash my clothes and help me with my homework, okay? I suppose I'm her villain, but she still loves me. She loves hearing about my day and watching romantic films. I sometimes tell her that she's amazing, but I should probably tell her more often. In fact, I'll tell her this evening. Something like that, you know, you could model something like that and the students could adapt it themselves again it doesn't need to be a family member it could be even their friends um even a teacher older brother older <laughs> sister maybe even you okay you could do a bit of encouragement okay for them to, to to choose you okay or another teacher in the school obviously um you can, as i said that could even be adapted from that previous worksheet um Obviously, you might need to, to get them to change a couple of the parts. And uh, okay. um, let us know if you have a superhero and who this is. Okay. As I said, Francesca talked about one. We had a couple in the uh, when we we're in the warm up session. Okay. Um, I think Kathy's going to take over and talk a little bit about what makes a superhero. Yeah, we have a really nice um, Ooh, video from from uh, Ted Ed, which uh, 
which is just a fantastic platform. The videos are really, really great. Uh, and we're going to oh, watch that video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not just yet. Uh, we'll watch that video and then talk about how we can use that both for uh, a listening skills based lesson and a creative writing oh, lesson. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, but just before we watch that video, um, can you get involved in the chat and uh, think about um, a superhero story or a hero story and name one event that happens in every hero storyline? Hmm, let us know in the chat if you can think of what this is or if you have some idea. I don't know if there's necessarily a correct answer for this, is there? Or we're just looking at, you know. No, no, I don't think, think so. Okay, so there might be many suggestions. Let us know in the chat. Um, I mean, one of the one of the events I, I think is always in a, in a hero story is despair, a moment of despair for the hero. For sure. Uh, um, okay, so we can go ahead and, and watch that video and then let's talk about, about how it can be used. Okay, we do have an associated uh, uh, worksheet for this, which you'll see a little bit after the, the, the video. Let us know if you can hear it okay. What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn at seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition, how? Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero, or do they chase him as he flees from a special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely. But let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey, Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well. You're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. 
Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then do it all over again. Yeah, nice video, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, showing that uh, these, they're sort of these archetypes. Okay? Um, I also see that Margarita um, guessed two of them as well. Oops, the, sorry. The, we have the uh, the crisis there. Batman's parents were killed in front of him. Yeah. And also this idea of the two worlds. Uh, so well guessed there. Yeah. I think uh, if I remember correctly, George Lucas, who made the Star Wars, was a big fan of this book. And, uh, you know, instead of, like, getting that to describe his thing, he actually based his story on these sort of uh, aspects. Mm. So, you mm -hmm. know, um, originally this was written, you know, about more myth than uh, epic stories, you know, like Ulysses or, or uh, Aeneas, they basing on this sort of thing, whereas, uh, you know, now it's uh, a lot of the people who have written these stories, the, these comics, these films have actually taken these ideas and uh, so it's sort of fed back yeah. on itself. Yeah. Well, why reinvent the wheel if there's a formula that works well? Mm. It works well. And so a video like that I think you could show in class, um, you know, the, uh, the worksheet here has some comprehension activities. You could be listening, but it could also feed into other activities you do on superheroes and yeah, it leads, it leads, sorry. sorry it leads really nicely into into a creative writing lesson because you then have that formula that was shown in the video that you can that you can reorder uh, and then from there start to make a plan for for a hero story or even talk about you know the stories they already know yeah and i think uh you know when when we're going to look at uh when you're looking at literature they, even books that might not necessarily be considered, you know, heroes or epics, but even something like Oliver Twist or, you know, certainly a lot of books of Dickens um, can be seen in this light. And then you have books like, I don't know, James Joyce's Ulysses, which is a sort of, in some senses, almost a parody of uh, a hero's journey, but it still takes these aspects of it. In fact, if I believe if I remember correctly, Joseph Campbell was a big fan of Joyce. Hmm. Uh, so here we have a really lovely quote from, from Joseph Campbell, which is also there in the video. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Uh, and this is you know, a quote reference from the video and, and can be a fantastic extension activity. You know, to get the students talking about their own hurdles um, you could watch the video again and talk about the examples from, from the video um, or, or, you know, those hurdles that they're facing in life at the moment as young adults, uh, students, members of family. Uh, as Francesca was saying earlier, it's important for, for young adults to identify themselves with, with these values. I think uh, often these sort of activities they push the students into areas of language that, that, that maybe they haven't tried before. You know, they're using uh, uh, language about ambitions, language about the future. You know, instead of just describing their daily activities, right, which is, you know, what they might do and uh, what they may have to do also, obviously, in, in spoken exams, in written exams, but pushing them into these sort of things, talking about ambitions, talking about... Uh, the future, ideals, painful experiences, things they're afraid of, um, it's, it's, it often pushes them into areas that, uh, you know, we, we might not expect them to go, okay? and they, they'll need that language. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice point. And they're also listening to each other because they want to. 
as soon as they're engaged in a topic that you know it it's it it becomes something meaningful to them definitely mm. um this would be a good kind of reflection activity um either kind of midterm um towards the end of the year at the end of holidays yeah i think uh it could be really good in that sort of sense that uh they can set ambitions we i think we've uh talked in previous webinars about you know at the start of the year start of the school year sometimes giving them an idea of what they want to achieve and you're talking about these things so i think that could be a great idea okay um we've also got uh kathy's going to talk a little bit about active learning yes these are all kind of like project-based ideas and what we're encouraging the students to do is to be reading watching uh, listening outside of the classroom and trying to give them as much exposure as possible to to authentic English really and we've got some ideas for some projects um, that you could have them working on there such as is there a superhero whose name begins with a U? Let us know in the chat if you know him. Yeah um, and then also in the handout there's some links to some different websites you can have them looking on. Here's a great database uh, so they can go through and and uh, kind of scan and look for specific information about different superheroes. Mm, for sure. Um, and then, yeah, we said these are really, really nice project lessons. So the idea is also to have them working together. So there's all that language they have to use to um, suggest things and, and negotiate with each other. Yeah, and I mean, you know, these are sort of... A activities that you can pull out at any time if you instead of uh you know doing one in the book you could see if uh you know out of the out of your textbook you substitute it with one of these when it comes to the say sort of relevant language okay and, and uh you know it's always nice to deviate from the book occasionally um, because they do get uh, a little fed up with doing the same exercises yeah. they, uh, a little worksheet Hey, that you even you can share it online if you wanted. No, it's always a great thing. Superhero daily routine. So this is one of the last full activities um, that we're that we're going to look at. Um, so have you actually ever wondered what superheroes do in a normal day when they're not fighting supervillains? What do they eat, drink, or do in their free time? So you'll start to realize this is this is very similar to an exercise that we've all used with kids talking about their daily routine. Uh, what's really nice about this is you can, after, after teaching them to talk about their daily routine, you can consolidate it with the, with the handout that you'll get uh, at the end of this webinar. And what makes it a little bit different is, of course, they have to be creative and um, they're talking about superheroes and, and their daily activities. So they're using different verbs as well. And then, of course, the, the third person singular S as well. Mm, exactly. I think uh, I, I, I'm sure all of the people in, the, in this webinar, I may stand corrected, but... Uh, let us know in the chat if you've ever done this uh, activity with asking students their typical day. You know, I wake up at, I have breakfast at, things like this. Now, after you've gone through a lot of students, obviously they come to school at the same time, they go back home at the same time, they uh, might have dinner at the same time, whereas, you know, they have a bit of creativity here they, and you can really add it to them. Yeah, lots of these activities are, are you know, use, using a theme to really engage the students and, and that's what makes it different. That's what makes it really memorable uh, for, the, for the students. The more fun it is, the more likely they are to, to remember the language, of course. Yeah, Roberta's, uh, <laughs> I know what you mean by boring. I, often I find like I'm asking the students and sort of I'm often zoning out when they're answering <laughs> I forget what time they say. I ask them, you know, oh, what time do you do your homework? I already told you. <laughs> I must admit. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you might want to include some other vocabulary, obviously, you know, superheroes. By the very definition, they're not people like us. So while they have some verbs in common, other verbs they might uh, do. And uh, as Cathy mentioned, the... the 
it's always an extra activity. I, you know, they get very used to talking about what I do. I get up, I get to put it in the third person is always a little bit uh, more difficult. And it's, uh, it's really something that, uh, you know, English grammar, particularly in the present, is quite easy. But uh, once you get to the third person, it's the one thing that uh, they tend to forget. Okay? And it just really doesn't make a great impression if you're not adding on the third person. Yet. So, yeah, it's true. And just repetition, repetition of that form mm. uh, is what helps. Yep. And I mean, you know, they could even do it as a question activity. You know, someone says, my superhero is Batman. Right? Or they can make up their own superhero, obviously. Um, and then the other students have to ask, what time does he go? You know, what, do, what does he do at three o'clock? Okay? Things like this. So you could also extend this activity into question forms. Um, you could do it as uh, you know, like guessing games, things like this. Okay? The, um, I've added, as always, there's a little box on the side of that uh, uh, worksheet so that people can draw in pictures. Again, I think, you know, adding a bit of drawing there is always a nice motivation for students. Okay, we're sort of coming to the end of our superhero webinar now. Um, another activity that's a really good idea is writing film reviews. Okay, um, you see that it, uh, in B2 and C1 Cambridge exams, they often ask for reviews, obviously not always films or TV series, many things they ask reviews for, but the language of reviews, even if it's not about a film or a TV series, whatever you, the language you've used to talk about films and recommending things and talking about pros and cons or good points, bad points, is always going to be transferable to even about restaurants or shops or whatever it is. Okay? Um, you know, if you're asking the students to review a superhero film, I doubt there's many students in the class that haven't seen at least one, even if they're not huge fans. So, and, uh, you know, again, as I said, even if they haven't, you could even consider like a lot of teen comedies and things like that can sort of be adapted as superheroes because even though they might not have superpowers, they have, you know, they're still someone who, like we saw in the video, overcomes their problems. Okay? Um, reading reviews might be um, a great idea too, that, uh, you know, you can ask students about a film they saw recently and send them to, if it's a superhero film, send them to find a review online. Something like a website like Rotten Tomatoes, if you know it, is a sort of compiling of all uh reviews that are available free on the web and they can click on that um there's a lot of things also where you can get reviews in sort of simple language as well so it doesn't need to be the ones that are written in newspapers for native speakers they can mm -hmm. even be simplified ones yeah i think you made a, a good point there about talking about about the plot and and the characters overcoming something because especially at B2 and C1, the, the students are marked on how complex their ideas are. And so rather than just explaining the A, B and the C of, of, of the plot, going into a bit more depth like that will definitely uh, help them out in the exam. Mm. Um, the, so you could also do this uh, as second conditional. So if you're teaching the second conditional, it's a great way for people to imagine if they had a superpower. I don't imagine many of your students actually have these superpowers. If they do, lucky them. But, uh, you know, if I could fly, I would. If I had X-ray vision, I would. I find, in my experience, uh, second conditional is something that you need to repeat a lot of times before they get used to it because it's sort of going against their instincts. They're using the past simple after if but they're not really talking about the past. Students will probably not find that natural, that they uh, have got used to think, thinking about, uh, talking about the present in the present, talking about the future in the future, talking about the past in the past simple. When you get to first, second and third conditionals, all of that is messed up. And uh, getting them to repeat these in a lot of ways is, uh, is a great idea. I mean, it's essential really. And instead of just, you know, the simple things like, you know, 
if I had a dog, I would call it. If I lived in the country, I would go okay, or I couldn't. Okay? These sort of things may be what you find in the book. Once you get them doing that, once you've taught the second conditional, give them some of these examples with superpowers and then they could imagine how, how they could use these superpowers. And, uh, you know, the first two examples there, then they can write their own, you know, think of other superpowers or things that uh, they could do that they would do if they were able to do other things. Here we've got a really nice uh, organising exercise. Uh, it's really nice getting um, students to, to organise new vocabulary. Um, here we're talking about positive and negative adjectives. So does it attribute to the, to the hero or, or the villain or which ones could be, be either the hero or the villain? Mm, you could uh, elicit these. You could put a superhero name up there that everyone knows, or even the, the you know even something like out of a Lord of the Rings or something. And they could uh, you could elicit these and then put up a villain. Okay? And then again, you could see where they overlap. Some of these things like strong is great if it's Superman. If it's the Joker, then it's a negative thing determined the same way it could be ambiguous and uh i think uh you know particularly at uh, uh b1 level for the um preliminary for schools exam the cambridge preliminary for schools exam they often ask you for a story well they always ask you for a story in fact and uh, a lot of these stories can be you know adapted as a superhero even if not writing about a superhero could be uh you know a great way to practice this and uh you know adjectives in my opinion anyway at b1 and b2 level adjectives in creative writing are the really the thing that make and break it and getting them instead of just saying you know very good very strong you know getting these extreme adjectives uh, invincible things like this are fantastic they, if they put that sort of vocabulary in there it really you know wows the examiner my experience the um, last idea sorry go for it go, go, please, please. Uh, the last idea we have is for creating some some dialogues and so on the internet it's very easy to find lots of comic strips with those with those blank speech bubbles and kids can go ahead and, and write out dialogues for those characters and so what's nice about this is it's because it's it's essentially a spoken, it's a spoken activity at the end. They're, they're going to perform these, um, these dialogues, but they get to plan it first. And so it kind of scaffolds these, these dialogues, these conversations that we're asking them to have. Yeah, I mean, you could even have the, the, the first couple of captions could be with the, the dialogue in there and they've got to show how it follows. Okay, so... Um, you know, that sort of speech is also good. It's sort of giving them some time to create some spoken English that they might actually act out later. Okay. Anyway, as usual, uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, tell us in the chat about any suggestions you have for future webinars. We've got uh, some ideas for ones coming up, but we're putting together the calendar for 2023 at the moment. So let us know in the chat if you've got some ideas. Uh, we do note them down every time. And uh, some of these have come up. We've done webinars on topics that uh, you've asked for. And even, even if we haven't had a full webinar, sometimes we've incorporated your ideas into other webinars. So let us know here. You can always email us too at Formazione and uh, we'll let you know about these. Okay. Um, Thanks for your attention, and uh, thank you particularly, Cathy, for joining us for the first time on the webinar, hopefully the first of many. And uh, I'll let everyone know that, again, that uh, if you don't receive your certificate of participation or the handout, please let us know at this website. You should receive it tomorrow. Okay? So, uh, you know, you won't receive it straight after the, the uh, webinar, but you should get it tomorrow. If you don't get it, Check your spam, but send us an email and we'll get it straight out to you. We have a Next. question here from Rosalba. 
uh, about watching the recording again. The recording, if you go to uh, MLA World on YouTube, just search MLA World on YouTube and uh, usually on the Monday or the Tuesday following the webinar, we upload it. Okay, So you'll uh, find all our webinars there. So even if you didn't get to attend some of them, we have been doing them for about two years now, a year and a half. And uh, so you'll find them there. So there's a lot of content there that you can see and uh, add them all the time. Um, but uh, all of the information, if you need it, will be in the handout. Next week, we will be talking about using games in the English classroom in the sense of grammar games, vocabulary games, things that uh, I think Kathy's going to be looking at a few warm-ups or icebreakers that you can use at the beginning to introduce a topic. Okay. Um, the link uh, for the recordings, it's a bit of a complex link, but look, just go to YouTube and what search for MLA World, MLA, as at the bottom of the page here, and uh, you can't fail. It'll be the most recent videos uploaded. Okay? There's a lot of other stuff there that you can watch about our summer schools, about our courses, but uh, you'll see these ones there. Okay? Um, please join us again next week. Kathy will be joining me for using games in English classroom. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, let us know. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot. for your participation. Have yeah, a great evening. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, bye, bye, bye.